Hello friends, I'm Janice Mitchell, pelvic health physical therapist, and today we're talking about prolapse and hypermobility and a score that can help to tell you if you're hypermobile. It's called the Baton score. There is some research to suggest that there's an association between hypermobility and pelvic organ prolapse. So what is hypermobility? Basically, it's being very, very mobile in your joints and your tissue. And the Baton score has five different elements that it's gonna be looking at, and I'm gonna demonstrate those elements. There's a really nice website that I'll link in the captions. It's called orthotoolkit.com. And so basically this website has a little calculator that you can put in to test all your different joints. And then it gives you a PDF of your score. So I think it's a nice tool and that's what we're gonna be using. We're gonna be looking at these five motions of your body or your joints. The beta score requires that you use an instrument called a goniometer. And a goniometer is an instrument kind of like a fancy ruler that helps you uh, measure joint angles. And so physical therapists use that a lot when we're measuring knees and elbows and hips and so forth. And so we're gonna be using that uh, today. Now the way that I'm using it isn't exactly official because uh, technically you'd be using this goniometer on a live person. But since I'm by myself and I'm doing all this myself, I I've taken still photos of the, um, of the motion in question and then I'll be using a goniometer on the screen here to measure and we can see what it looks like. So the first motion that we're measuring for me is passive dorsiflexion and hyperextension of this MCK joint. So let's check it out with the goniometer and see what I have. So we are looking right here. On my left, it is right at 90 degrees, so it is not positive on my left. And then on my right, it's a little bit past, about three degrees past 90 degrees, so it would be positive on my right. And my left, I actually broke this bone and this bone playing dodgeball a couple years ago with my daughter's uh, middle school middle school uh, grades, so that was kind of crazy. And I know that I have less mobility and a little stiffness and tightness in, in this joint in this hand. The next one is called passive opposition of the thumb to the flexor aspect of the forearm. So again, such technical medical terms, but basically we are looking at the thumb and we're seeing if you can pull it to your forearm. And I'll test my right here pretty easy for me to do that. And now I'll test my left. Again, pretty easy for me to do that. So both of those for me would be positive. The third test we're looking at is passive hyperextension of the elbows beyond 10 degrees. So this is the elbow joint and we're looking at that joint to see if it's neutral or if it goes past 10 degrees. Let's pull out the goniometer and let me measure on myself here. That is positive on my left side. And also positive on my right. So basically both of them were between 10 to 12 degrees. So that was greater than 10 degrees. And um, basically that's showing that I have pretty flexible joints there. The fourth element is your knees. So passive hyperextension of the knees beyond 10 degrees. So again, you have your knee joint and we bend it, right? But hyperextension is going back that way. So let's take the goniometer and measure and see how we did. Left and technically, when you're measuring it, you're you're uh, feeling for the greater true velocity here in your hip, and you're lining it up with the ankle bone there. But I'm just kind of ballparking it here. So I'm about six degrees there. So 
So that would not be positive on my left side. And on my right, I'm again about six degrees. So neither of my knees would be positive for that test. The last test is active forward flexion of the trunk with the knees fully extended, so they can't be bent, uh, so that the palms of the hands rest flat on the floor. So here you see me doing that in a picture, and let's see, um, let's see. Basically, it is a positive test because I can, my knees are straight, you can see my knees are straight, and my palms are flat on the ground. Now it's time for scoring. So the orthotoolkit.com has a really nice calculator that you can look at each motion on each joint and put in your score. And so each motion is worth one point if it's positive or zero if it's negative out of a total possible of nine points. So there's some discrepancy about what number you need to be at to be hypermobile. Some people say four, some people say five, some people say six. But basically the further you are, the higher your score, the more likely you are to be hypermobile and to have increased tissue flexibility. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do my score. So out of a total possible of nine, we're gonna look at each motion and we'll score it together. All right, so the first score was passive hyperextension of the pinky, right? Beyond 90 degrees. So on my left, I was negative. So that's a zero, but on my right, I was positive. So that's a one. Then we have the bending the thumb to the forearm passive hyperflexion there. And so I have a positive on my right, which is a one, and a positive on my left, which is one. So that's two more points, so a total of three points so far. Then we have elbow hyperextension. So positive on the right, which is one, positive on the left, which is one. Two more points, that gets us to, gets us to five. Now we have hyperextension of the knees. So where the knees are, you know, going back past 10 degrees. And I was zero on both sides. I wasn't quite at 10 degrees. I was a little past uh, neutral, but not at 10. And then the last one was bending forward and putting hands flat on the floor. And so that's one more point. So I had a total of six points out of a possible score of nine. And then on this uh, little toolkit, you put all those in and it gives you a PDF of your score. So you can print it out and it's a nice it's a nice uh, tool to have. For healthcare providers, I would recommend that you use this for patients or clients that you think uh, might be at risk for hypermobility. It gives some good insight into the, the flexibility and hypermobility hyper of the joints. And then if you're not a healthcare provider, uh, don't worry. Basically, you don't have to have a goniometer to be able to use this uh, score. You can kind of ballpark it and see, okay, is that past neutral or is it not? Uh, is the knee past neutral or is it not? To be official, you definitely do need to go to a healthcare provider who has a goniometer and can actually measure your joints. But it's a, it's a nice little indicator uh, and a nice screening tool that that might give you an idea of your flexibility and risk of hypermobility. So I hope this uh, information was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.